Um, the reason, or one of the reasons for me being in Serbia today, is to present the launch of Trinomia, which is the first cardiovascular polypill available worldwide in 48 countries right now. Uh, and it's very exciting. It's a very simple concept, but, but which touches upon very complex epidemiological, clinical and real world uh, application and implementation of current treatments. So uh, I'm going to be giving a, 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 a I'm going to be talking in a symposium uh, this afternoon, and what I'm going to be starting uh, about talking is why in 2017 do we need the use of a polypill in cardiovascular disease? Now polypills have been in medicine being used for nearly 20 years, and if you remember, the first polypills to come out were the ones that were used to treat the HIV pandemic. This was early 2000, and at that time, the polypills were used because it was a pandemic, huge number of people uh, being affected by HIV, and especially in regions where they did not have access to treatments that otherwise chronify the disease. So unfortunately, in 2017, Dr. Fuster with CENIC and partnering with Ferrer, so it's a public institution, partnering with a, with a private uh, institution in Spain, uh, decided to come up with a polypill for cardiovascular disease. And the reason is because, unfortunately, the scenario is very similar today to what it was then for the acute HIV, malaria, TB uh, pandemic. So we are facing number one killer worldwide, where 80% of deaths are taking place in low and middle income countries, where we know from studies such as the PURE and the Interheart that the access to, 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 to treatment is very, very low. As low as 10%, 8%, only 3% of patients have access to aspirin, ACE inhibitors, statins, and beta blockers. So having that treatment be available for the rest of the 20% of the world it's been a social responsibility that Dr. Fuster has undertaken in order to provide that 80% of the population with a treatment that, sure, it may not be ideal for every patient, for different reasons that we will talk about today, but it's definitely much, much better than the alternative, which is not having accessibility to treatment. That's in the low and middle income country setting. If you go to the high income setting where people have access to treatments, we have found that we have a big problem as well in terms of not accessing the treatment, but patients after an MI have to take such complex regimens of treatments. They feel generally well, 80% of post MI patients are asymptomatic, and they have to face daily battling with many pills, complex regimens, usually they're changed, and we're treating asymptomatic conditions, blood pressure, uh, cholesterol, uh, platelet inhibition, uh, that we know, and we've done this through many different studies, prospectively and retrospectively, 50% of patients post-acute MI, after six months, abandon treatment. So we have a problem of adherence. So one of the central issues today is going to be we have these very fancy randomized clinical trials that are feeding fantastic clinical guidelines and chronic treatment of stable coronary disease. It's not difficult to follow. You have to make sure patients have changes in lifestyles, very complex, uh, but that they follow relatively A, B, C, D regimens, uh, lifelong treatments. Uh, but then this has become a paramount uh, barrier for patients to adequately follow treatment. So then the efficacy that we, that we are being told that these four treatments in secondary prevention have in terms of avoiding morbidity and mortality, about 75% combined efficacy, when you translate that into the real world implementation, we have about 15-20% efficacy because patients either cannot access healthcare or the physicians do not prescribe as they should following the guidelines 
And when they do these two first steps, the third step is that only 50% of patients are adherent. So then the polypill becomes, and I have to say this in quotes, unfortunately becomes a very good solution in 2017 to try and tackle these two different scenarios. One is many, many patients not accessing treatment that would chronify the disease. And in those areas, regions where patients can access treatment, they're not following adequately. And we've also run many studies showing that the polypill is probably the best strategy to improve adherence. Because just putting three compounds into one pill that you take once daily greatly simplifies the, the, the complexity that the patients have to take. And patients understand that this is my one heart pill I have to take and they uh, improve adherence very much. Now, we've also run studies in the United States with, with insurers showing that only based on good adherence, those patients that are good adherent after an MI in two years, they, we can reduce uh, the events on nearly 27%. So it's huge recovery of efficacy that we're losing along the way, only based on adherence. So then, Finally, I think the polypill uh, has really moved from a conceptual debate in the past 15 years. This is the first and right now the only polypill available worldwide, cardiovascular polypill. Like I said, Trinomia is now uh, approved in more than 48 countries. And I think finally, regulatory bodies, physicians and the patients are accepting that whilst we would like to have the perfect scenario that is absolutely resembling what the guidelines tell us. You know, everybody loses weight, everybody stops smoking, everybody exercises, everybody eats well, and everybody takes the pills as they should. This is not the reality. And we need to be able to adapt to what really is happening with our patients worldwide because we're not doing well. And so while we accept this is not the perfect scenario, perfect scenario would be what I just said, to have everything great, it's a good, it's a realistic, and it's a good um, adaptation to what we can offer to most of the patients, and they will do well most of the time for different reasons, either because you're uh, favoring acceptability and adherence, or you're favoring adherence. And we've also run models that the polypill is extremely cost-effective because based on adherence, based on uh, reducing events, the public health system will, uh, in turn, uh, be able to save millions of euros, millions of dollars. So, again, I think the evidence is there. We and other teams have shown that the polypill is safe. It's bioequivalent, trinomia is bioequivalent, and that's the only requisite that regulatory agencies ask of you in order to approve it. It improves adherence, it's cost-effective, and it improves the risk factor profile. So I think we're finally 15 years after developing the clinical data, the, the, the Galenic innovation to be able to put all those components into one single pill, we are ready to finally implement. And I think the message is, you know, it's not the perfect scenario, but it's good enough and certainly way better than the alternative that we have now, that we just cannot uh, accept what's happening in secondary prevention worldwide at this moment. And this is really the reason for the polypill to be, to be ready and, and ready to be a, a big player in Serbia, I hope.